Hello and welcome to Living Life. It's so great to spend time together in God's Word. Yesterday we saw Paul warning the church that his rivals were actually fake apostles, masquerading and, and were demonic in nature, actually. In today's text, we will see Paul going on a uh, really a series of boasting, but his boasting will be different from the boasting of his rivals in that Paul boasts about his sufferings, his, about his weakness. So why is Paul boasting about his sufferings rather than his success? Let's look into the text together. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 16 through 33. I repeat, let no one take me for a fool, but if you do, then tolerate me, just as you would a fool, so that I may do a little boasting. In this self-confident boasting, I am not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too will boast. You gladly put up with fools, since you are so wise. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslaves you, or exploits you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. Whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was pelted with stones, three times I was shipwrecked, I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled, and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin, and I do not inwardly burn? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and the Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas had the city of the Damascenes guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. So Paul is uncomfortable in boasting because that's not what he's used to doing. He says that this is what fools do, boasting about themselves in verse 17. In verse 18, Paul, he says that many people in the world boast according to the flesh. In fact, Corinthians were fools for putting up with these false apostles who were enslaving them and exploiting them with their false teaching. Then, in starting in verse 22, uh, Paul starts listing one by one qualities and attributes that compares with these uh, false apostles. So let's look at verse 22 and 23. Are they Hebrews? Paul says, so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. So Paul was not only equal in the religious background or ethnic background, ancestry, heritage as these false apostles, but he was superior to them. 
No one served Christ more, like more than Paul. No one was more afflicted and persecuted for their faith than Paul. He mentions how he received five times like whipping, 40 lashes minus one. That is barely surviving the whipping. He was beaten with rods, pelted with stone, shipwrecked for his faith. He spent a night and a day in the open sea. He has been in constant danger from rivers, from bandits, uh, from fellow Jews, from Gentiles. City was not safe for him, nor was a country. He was saying like he didn't find safety anywhere. He was facing danger everywhere he went, even from false believers. So Paul can confidently say that he labored and toiled for the church more than anybody. He lost sleep, he went hungry, he went thirsty for the gospel. He has been cold, he has been naked. And then look at verse 28. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Can you imagine like facing this great pressure every day, pressure being concerned for all the churches. Think about whether they're walking in the Lord. It's like having dozens and dozens of children who are away from home and you're just thinking about their well, well-being every day, like every day, wondering how they're doing. So that's daily constant pressure upon Paul in all of this. Paul is boasting very differently than the false apostles, whereas false apostles were boasting about their strength and their success, their accomplishments. Paul was boasting about his weakness, about his failings, about his hardship. And why is Paul boasting in his weakness? Look at verses 30 and 31. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and the Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. So Paul is boasting in his sufferings, boasting in his weakness, because it is in weakness that God's strength and God's power is on display. Ultimately, he wants God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive all praise. So in all of Paul's boasting, he's not saying, look at me, look how great I am, look at what I did. Rather, he is saying, look at how great God is. I am unworthy, but God is worthy. I am weak, but He is strong. Here then is a surefire, a surefire mark of a true follower of Jesus. A true follower of Jesus is not mar marked by a string of accomplishments and success. Jesus never promised that if we follow Him, only success and only prosperity will follow us. Rather, a true follower of Jesus is the one who denies himself daily, takes up his cross, and follows after Jesus. A true follower of Jesus, as exemplified by Paul, is someone who may experience sufferings and weakness, a lot of brokenness in this life. See how Paul had to endure hardships and even face death for the sake of the gospel. So we might ask, like, how can he stay singularly devoted to Christ in the midst of trying circumstances? The answer is that he never lost sight of God's greatness. Like he says, the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever. So Paul confesses that no matter what hardships may come, he wants the Lord Jesus to be praised. Some of you are going through seasons of trials, affliction. Maybe some of you are going through suffering precisely because of your faith in Christ. It might be in your job or in your school, socially. It's costing you. You know what it's like to face daily pressure of concern and caring and serving other people in your life. You know what it's like to be exhausted because of your labor and toil in serving the Lord. And you wonder, is this all worth it? Should I just give up? If that's you, like I pray that the Lord will give you strength today to keep your eyes fixed on Christ, who is to be praised forever. May the strength of God be on full display in your weakness, because that's how we boast in our weakness. 
When we are weak, He is strong. So as we close today, we want to pray for those of us who are going through seasons of hardship and difficulty. May God and Father of the Lord Jesus be praised, be glorified through our suffering. Let's pray. Father, we just pray for those of us who are going through afflictions, weakness, seasons of brokenness and hardship. Father, that you would keep them that you will sustain them. Oh, Lord, please strengthen them, Lord, in their weakness. Lord, may the Father, the God, the Lord Jesus Christ be honored and praised through our suffering. So would you be with them today? In Jesus' name, amen. <music>